So this is uh, Solaris, um, which is sort of a super ring mod patch. Um, I wanted to do a really sort of intense ring mod patch ever since I uh, the the oscillator frequencies were extended because I think there's this um, beautiful quality to sub audio ring modulation. Uh, and particularly your ability to um, modulate it. Uh, so what happens when you uh, create sub-audio ring modulation? You essentially create a tremolo, but it has a sort of interesting, almost phased quality. Right now I have the mix at 100%, but if I play it... Um, with some of the dry signal, you may hear that a little better. Turn up the volume. And so I just really love that sound in general, but I also love the ability to move between the, the sub-audio and the audio realm. Um, so this patch can do that in a number of ways. So it, basically it's set up like a modulation matrix. You have modulators going down the side and onto the second page, uh, and you have destinations across the top. So the destinations are the, the oscillator frequency for the ring mod, um, there's an aliaser that follows the ring mod, uh, which can itself create sort of ring modish tones. And also just sort of mess up a signal. Uh, I think they complement ring mods really well. Um, there's also a duty cycle for the oscillator. So you can change the duty cycle, which will change the shape of the oscillator. At sub-audio, that'll change the shape of the tremolo. At audio, it'll change the, the timbre of the oscillator. Um, and it becomes, I think, a little bit more like a sawtooth. And then there's an FM where you can feed the oscillator back into its FM input. And again, at, at sub audio. It creates, I think, really cool tremolo interrupted by robot noise uh, sort of stuff. Um, and then you have these modulators that you can apply to these signals. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the combinations. I'm just going to talk really quickly about the modulators themselves. So you have an LFO section, uh, which has a positive and a negative depth, but you can also uh, make it unipolar. If this switch is turned on, it'll only go above and back to the frequency that, that you're adjusting or the parameter that you're adjusting. When this is off, it's bipolar. So it uses that frequency as sort of a center point. So in one case it goes up and down, up and down, and then it the other it sort of circles around that frequency. Um, I'll just apply it to... Let's, let me change the shape. Right now there are four shapes. One is a uh, random. The other is a square wave. Let me adjust 
just the speed of that too. There, the LFO and the sequencer, which I'll get to, have clock dividers. They're they're all based on the clock. I did that uh, so that you could run them together and, and create sort of in interesting syncopation. Um, and the, the clock is tap tempo or MIDI clock. MIDI clock will overrule tap tempo. So it's going, when a aliaser is at a really low frequency, it just descends into, I'll show it off. Right, sort of noisy buzzes. change how the LFO relates to the thing that it's modulating, whether it uses that as a center point or, or whatever. Um, there's a positive and a negative depth. The negative depth will only be meaningful if it's in unipolar mode. In bipolar mode, both depths affect the LFO the same way uh, because, you know, there isn't a positive or a negative. It swings from positive to negative. Uh, so you can set it up to swing between, um, audio and sub-audio ranges. So there's a square wave, there's also a triangle wave. And a ramp. And then there's a smoothing control that, that essentially slews the output. You can apply that to any of the waves. It'll affect the depth But I mostly put that in there so that you could smooth the edges of the random wave. Um, to get some of those classic ring mod alien sounds. So that's the LFO. There's an envelope. Um, with a, a positive and a negative depth. Um, let's use the negative depth. And a slew control. So you can control how quickly the envelope rises and falls. You can apply that to... Or we could apply it positively to something like the FM amount. You can also combine the envelope and the LFO so that as the envelope increases in amplitude, the LFO will grow stronger. Which is fun. Um, you have to find the right applications for it and that maybe wasn't the best one. Uh, there's a sequencer. It's on the second page and you can control, it has up to eight steps, but you can control the step count using this second track. So if you put a gate on the second track, the output of the second track goes to the restart of the sequencer, uh, limiting its length. So, you know, here I've made it a five-step uh, sequence. I can go through and 
throw in whatever notes I want. I'm just choosing these randomly, so I'm sure they will sound fantastic. Um, yeah, there we go. Super high pitched. You can control the depth, which I'm going to do right now just to make this not so pitchy. Uh, but at a, a depth of one, it will track the, the pitches appropriately. You can also slew the output. Um, or use portamento. This uses a CV filter, so it's not slewing it, it's, it's filtering it. The same with the LFO smoothing. And that can be applied to any of the four parameters. Then we get into a couple of controls that only affect the aliaser frequency and the uh, uh, ring mod frequency. So one is pitch tracking. And the pitch tracking has a control called key tracking, which is essentially its depth control. Um, when it's set to 0.5, and I usually keep this on notes just because it's easier for me to dial in A5 than 0.5. When it's set to 0.5, it will track notes. I'm going to set this so that it tracks my note exactly. Um, and it has its own portamento, which you're hearing. Um, you can also track above 100%. Uh, which tends to be cooler when you start going into um, sub-audio ranges. So here we have a tremolo that, that gets faster. as we move up the neck. So higher pitches have a faster tremolo rate, but if we change the key tracking to negative, we get the opposite effect. And the problem with that is that I have set the oscillator frequency at negative 10, so it has nowhere to go because there's nothing below that. But if I set it back to A0, my tremolo gets faster the lower I, I play down the neck. Um, you know, and something I should mention about the sequencer is that when used in sub-audio ranges, you get something a little bit like a pattern tremolo, uh, which can be very cool. And you can slew that so you can get things that aren't quite pattern tremolos. They aren't as distinct as pattern tremolos, but, but it's a lot of fun to play with the sequencer and sub-audio uh, rates. Um, you can pitch track the aliaser. Uh, let's try doing that the other way around where I turn down the aliaser's frequency and pitch track positively. And then there's an expression input that I'm not going to show off because